He's focused fully on the Copper America, but back home and across Europe, we are seeing reports that PSG could try and swoop in while things are a little bit uncertain and Messi is out of contract at Barcelona. What have you made of these reports? Well, we know and we've reported many times on ESPN, whether it's on this show or on the website, that PSG went in constant discussion, let's say, with Jorge Messi, who is Messi's dad and his brother, who are looking after, after his interest. Leonardo and, and Nasser Khalifi, to a certain extent, have always kept that on, that, kept that alive. The fact that you, we could talk, we could discuss, we did, we're here to hear what you have to say. If you're interested in joining PSG, we can put something together. PSG, for a long time now, even last summer, have said they believe that they can still sign Messi and keep Mbappe and, and Neymar at the club. I'm very sceptical, to be honest, and I've always been. But they said that they worked out numbers and it, it might be possible. But there's no offer has been made yet, despite what I've been saying in Europe, especially in Spain, in certain newspapers. No offers. But PSG will keep an eye on, on that situation and be very open. And if Messi says something positive, then I think they could be looking into it. But for now, they still believe that Messi will stay at Barcelona and will sign a new contract there. Yeah, obviously, because the thought is that he will stay at Barcelona, but Barcelona need to free up some wages before that all goes ahead. This was Jules's possible PSG starting 11. You're smiling at this one, Frank. <laughs> no, because I'm... <laughs> Would you like to see him there? Well, of course, yes. You know, we would say no, especially when I saw the highlights of the last game, uh, where, you know, I, I almost... We are ready to say that uh, Miss, uh, Paris Saint-Germain was a pre-retirement uh, uh, club, you know, with Vinaldum, uh, Ramos and, and Messi signing. But when you see what he's still capable of doing and uh, with the two assists and, and the free kick, of course it would be a plus. I think there is maybe 1% of possibilities to see him, but is 1% good enough to, to make him sign? I don't think so. Uh, Casey Keller said last time that he never thought that uh, Messi will uh, leave Barcelona. And I'm with him. I think it's just spe speculation. I think they try to find a way to, for Barcelona to get into his, um, his, um, his price and the, the wage that they want. But I don't see him leaving Barcelona. Uh, if you were Messi, why wouldn't you join that team, Nadem, if they were interested in you? Because he wants titles now. It's the twilight of his career. Obviously, he's still got so much to offer. He knows what he would have around him there. Listen, he's won a ton of titles with Barcelona. That's the team where he came up through their academy. He's part of that history. You know, is iconic for playing for that team. And the PSG thing, it's, it's exciting. But then also, let's, let's be clear, for as good as that team is, they, they, they didn't win Ligue 1 last year, so they're not perfect either. And I think the Barcelona situation for him, I think if you can see positives in there and the chance that maybe they can get better, then I think you, I think you choose to stay with it because ultimately I think that club means everything to him. But Xhaka, don't you think you want to get those titles? No, I, listen, I, well, f first of all, as much as we talk about Lionel Messi and, and have done over the last what, 12 or 13 months and, and we'll continue to speculate over the next two or three, I struggle to see Lionel Messi in anything but a Barcelona ship. Mm -hmm. So while I'll talk about the speculation and, and add to it, I, I, it's always in... With, with, with that underpinning that I, I just can't see him leaving the Camp Nou for all the reasons that, that Nadam just, just explained. He has won so much uh, already in the game. And when a club, uh, when you've been at one club as long as he has, when a club in a city means as much as, as Barcelona does to you, even with the disappointments of last season and even how close he came to leaving Camp Nou la last summer, I, I just feel that that's a really difficult decision to make and, and one that I, I understand he'll, he'll continue to, to struggle with. So while um, PSG may offer a team that's closer to winning the Champions League this season, if, if Barcelona can convince him that, listen, we're going to offload, and I know there's speculation around, around who goes, um, and we can give you something close to what you, what you want to earn, and we're going to build a team that will be as good as PSG in the next year, maybe two at most, I, I think that's enough to keep him. He must, <laughs> he must believe then, Jules, that Barcelona are going to be able to offer him uh, what he wants. We know he wants to go back to those winning ways with the club. Um, what do you make of it? Do you think that it is going to be able to be Barcelona, that he will be able to be in a team that are going to be able to deliver that silverware again? That's what I find fascinating because a year ago, and we know because, he, because it's public and, and he, he was clear, he wanted to leave. What has changed in a year time for him to stay? It can't, it can't have been what happened last season because 
they could have won the title and they, they pretty much blew it themselves. They were bad in the Champions League and they lost in the last 16 to, to PSG. They won the Copa del Rey, but he's not going to be happy with that. So what could have changed in a year for him to say, you know what, a year ago I wanted to leave, now I want to stay. Is it just because Sergio Aguero, who is his, his best friend of all best friends, has joined Barcelona? Maybe, maybe. Maybe their dream was to play together at club level like they do with the national team. And maybe that could be enough for him to stay. But the way they've strengthened this squad in Barcelona is just, OK, they've added Memphis Depay, Sergio Aguero. I mean, we said many times they could field almost an 11 with only strikers or forwards. This is not how you're going to win the Champions League or even La Liga next season. What happened to your defence that was so leaky and so bad? What happened to your midfield where there's a point where Pedri is amazing, but he's still only 18 and there might be a point where he was going to get tired and Busquets is getting older and De Jong is amazing and maybe can hold the fort for you. But if you're Messi, you think, OK, show me what you can do, but not just by buying strikers and signing forwards and wingers because we've got too many of that. So. Listen, he's going to stay because this is his home and this is his life. And Antonella and the children are so happy in Barcelona. He's never going to do that to them, I think. But I find it really fascinating that a year ago he wanted to leave and now he's ready to stay. But if you look at it, I'm not sure things have changed that much for the better in the last 12 months. Well, so what does it come to at this Sorry, stage? Sorry, but all those speculations crack me up, you know, because at the end of the day, everybody is in trouble financially in the world, big clubs. Only three clubs well, mainly two big clubs, Manchester City and Paris Saint-Germain, and uh, for some extent, Chelsea, I would say, are capable of buying players. The others, they look at their money and they say, oh, yeah, okay, no, no, no. And they look at the list of the players they have and they don't want anymore. But the players they don't want, nobody wants them. So it won't be the musical chair where, okay, I'm selling that one, I'm going to buy another one, and it goes like that, and we're going to have a big transfer. The only good big transfer we can... Uh, be happening is Mbappé. If Mbappé goes to Manchester City, because <laughs> that's maybe the only club who can buy him, maybe then Manchester City is going to buy other players or um, uh, Paris Saint-Germain is going to buy other players and it goes like that with a musical chair. But if Mbappé decides to stay in Paris Saint-Germain, nobody's going to move because nobody will have the money to spend on players who are not capable of staying in the, the club they belong to because they're not, they're not have been good enough. So we are speculating on, on you know, <laughs> bad effects, I would say, in, the, in a way. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content plus live streaming, make sure to subscribe to ESPN Player.